Hi, David, they call me MacGyver. Today I'm gonna to show you how to take a standard small contractor's table saw and fix it so that you can actually tie it into a dust collection system. I'm gonna show you how to do that for a very little bit of money. Um, hang with me and we'll get started. So here we've got my table saw turned upside down and uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the stand off of it. And there are two bolts with nuts on each leg. So I'm taking those off using a cordless drill, uh, cord actually a cordless impact driver. Make sure you grab all your nuts and bolts and washers, because you're gonna need to reuse those to reassemble this after we're uh, done sealing this up. So it's just so much faster with a cordless versus a socket wrench. And then I'm going to uh, blow this base out because there's a bunch of sawdust in there from before. And that way, when I put my sealer in there, I'm not going to be having it uh, messed up because there's a bunch of dust in there. I want a clean surface to be able to stick it to. So I'm going to take the funnel piece and I laid it on a piece of three quarter inch material. Uh, three quarter inch plywood works. This is actually some cabinet board that's uh, slick on both sides, but three quarter inch plywood will work. And then I start with a jigsaw uh, cutting around. And if you've never used a jigsaw before, it's actually pretty simple. You just kind of keep your eye on the line in front and keep following it and just Take your time and work your way around. This could be done on a bandsaw as well, but uh, a lot of bandsaws don't have a big enough throat to uh, spin this big a piece of wood in. So jigsaws are really a lot easier on something of this nature. Just taking your time, working your way around. Notice I'm holding the board over there because I'm pushing that jigsaw across there and it'd push the board if I didn't. Be careful when you're cutting that you don't end up cutting your cord. Uh, so I'm gonna move my cord out of the way. And we're just working our way around the circle and coming back up to the location where I entered on the edge there. Um, and you notice that I started pretty close to the edge when I drew my circle just so I didn't have to cut through a bunch of material. So we got it all cut out now. <clears throat> now we're gonna put this into the that funnel shaped piece. And it looks like that wood wasn't strong enough to hold that, so I'll do it on the ground. Just wanna get it all the way in there flush. You see, it's all smooth. <clears throat> now I'm gonna put the four inch collector valve in put it in there and this is what your hose is going to attach to for your dust collection system and there's a valve on the end there that opens and closes so that when you're not using um, the valve you can close it off to increase the suction for other tools and I'm just drawing a circle around it you noticed I measured to make sure it was in the middle then I take a uh, hole saw <coughs> making sure that it's the right size I set it on there against those lines You'll see I set it on there and now I'm gonna, after I've got it in there, I mark the inside circle because your hole saw has a pilot bit uh, that comes out of the center of it. And you wanna make sure that you're getting into the center of your hole. Had to take a couple devices off there so they didn't fall on the ground. Now when you're cutting with a hole saw, no matter what kind of material you're doing, see how I kind of wobble the hole saw? That's because you can't ever, unless you're using a drill press, actually keep it perfectly level, but this allows you to uh, make sure that you're cutting all the way around the wood, not just on one edge. You could be going off center. Once we get that cut, yep, see, sets right on there. Um, falls in, and that's my valve that opens and closes to open or close for the suction. And so now I'm marking it stuck in there. I'm gonna actually cut off the excess because I don't want that sticking up above blocking sawdust. I just used a, a, my bandsaw on this and cut it off. You could also use a sawzall or um, probably even use a hacksaw or um, a jigsaw. And then I'm going to caulk 
all the way around, making sure that I have um, a good connection all the way around this. And that's going to do two things. It's going to keep any dust uh, from getting caught down in there. But it's also going to seal it off so no air gets sucked in. Um, because you want to try to increase all the suction up to where the blade comes through your table. Because that's where your dust is, is created. And then I take my finger and I just smooth it around because I don't want any bumps or lips for the uh, sawdust to get stuck in. And this will make it more likely to fall into that hole. And I also do the same thing on that little four inch piece. I uh, smear it all the way around the edge of the um, collector valve to make sure that I've got uh, a nice seal with the caulking there as well. And then after I've done that, I'm going to pilot some screw holes down below on the flange right there and put screws in. You can put three or four screws as you move around. You want at least three, but uh, you could go four um, so that that holds that uh, in place. And then that caulking is also going to hold it in place. And then I've got some real heavy duty duct tape, really sticky stuff. And I'm putting it on the outside here, just covering up some holes. Because when I start uh, putting in my sealer in there, I don't want it to come out. I'm trying to keep it inside so that um, it's not ugly coming outside the stand. Once I get that all taped up, then I take my, um, my stand and I put it back on the base. And then... Those bolts and nuts that you, you uh, removed, you want to make sure that you put all those back in. If you have any washers on there, make sure you reuse those in the same uh, manner in which that you took them off. If you keep things organized, it's easy to remember uh, what goes where. And so I'm putting all those back in. After I get them all installed, then I'll go back with my impact driver. Or you can go back with a drill, a cordless drill, and just... Uh, tighten up all those nuts and uh, on those bolts and sometimes you might need to put a uh, wrench underneath to hold the head uh, just to can depends on whether or not it spins so I'll go around here with my impact driver and tighten those all up and you see that uh, valve the slider valve is actually pointed towards the front of the table saw so when you're standing at the front of the saw you have control to open or close that valve. Then I'm going to use some great stuff. This stuff is is good. You don't want to use this on like doors or windows because it's so strong it can actually crack the window or bend the door frame. Um, but on something like this that's steel, it's not going to move it and it'll seal it up pretty good. If you ever do doors or windows, you want to use a special spray foam that's made for doors and windows. So we'll get this off make sure you shake it a good 60 seconds you want to get that stuff mixed up and then they provide you with a nozzle that screws onto the end of that and this stuff is i don't know like four or five dollars a can uh, it's not very expensive but we'll we'll spray this in all the cracks and uh, all the way up where the table saw meets the plastic we're filling that gap and it's, it's going to grow, so keep in mind this is going to grow to be about twice the size of what you put down. It's, it goes about 100% growth, and it will seal it up so that that will keep all the dust from uh, getting caught in cracks and stuff. And it also allows more air suction out through the slot in the top of the table saw. Once you get this all set up, uh, you can connect it in your dust, dust, dust collection system. And there it is. It's uh, all sealed and ready to flip back over and connect into my dust collection system. And it really does work good. I hope that was helpful to you. See the foam down there? It's all expanding. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope that was informational to you. Uh, I hope it can help you in some way or another. And. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Click the bell icon. That way, anytime I do a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks a lot, and you have a great day.